sustain and maintain you on that journey. And I also know that what we know in dentistry today is we can keep our teeth for a lifetime. And I mean by 120 if we get so lucky. And not only are we gonna have our teeth in our mouth, but it, they are gonna be our best anti-aging part of our body. So when you're at that age and you're looking in the mirror, your eyes may not see wrinkles, but it will see a beautiful smile. And as we learn on this seminar, what we're gonna learn is every time you smile, you release endorphins. And you release endorphins, it's our best natural vitamin. So my goal is, is to give you information to create that opportunity and to be aware of all the different things that are available in dentistry, uh, whether it's uh, leading edge technologies and education, so that you can take charge and uh, give yourself the very best. Your blood pressure is going to go up, cholesterol is going to go up, your triglycerides will go up, your insulin levels will go up, uh, and you're going to need medication to treat all that stuff. It's going to increase care costs. So, the National Academy of Sciences Food Chemicals Codex Sodium Chloride Monograph. This is the Bible for salt manufacturers in the Western world. They say up to 2% of food grade salt may contain anti caking, free flowing, or conditioning agents, which concludes sodium ferrocyanide, ammonium citrate, aluminum silicate, and dextrose as a stabilizer for the ionic salt. That doesn't sound so good to me. Here's what's in refined salt 99% sodium and chloride, up to 2% of those toxic chemicals. And they add iodine, a small amount of iodine in it, which I talked to you about last night a little bit, you know, yesterday afternoon. So, refined salt has all its minerals removed. It's a lifeless product. The reason they remove all that good stuff is the same reason they remove all the they refined oils and flour and sugar, because it can stay in the shelf forever. It has an unlimited shelf life the product. It sells, uh, you know, it's, it's a better margin for um, the food companies. So, Celtic salt. I started using Celtic salt in my practice um, about 20 years ago. And the reason I started using it is I saw all these patients with adrenal problems and they had low sodium and chloride levels. Well, how your DNA works. The subtitle is most important. The death, the death of the genetic theory of disease transmission. Remember there's a death of diseases called by evil spirits and the little gods. It just happens. And all kinds of things. Well, those theories are all dead. Well, the genetic theory is now dead too. This is me in 1977 when I discovered the first monkeys with cystic fibrosis. One of my that we take in every day in our food, but it's very difficult to absorb when you have a gluten intolerance. And so people who um, have gluten intolerance cannot absorb this nutrient, and as a result, the side effect or the, the symptoms of this deficiency of this nutrient is cravings, binge eating, and the munchies. So this kind of electricity is electricity in a coarsened form in a reduced down form. That's the kind they can run their machines with, the kind they can run laser surgery with, the kind they can do MRI scans with. We're moving towards a time of original human medicine. That means you go and see the doctor, and the doctor would look at you, he's probably there, the doctor would look at you, and the doctor would make a bow, or a bow, a bow is a bow. The doctor would actually look and scan from the feet, all the way up to the top of the head and above the head, and again, and what the doctor will be doing is scanning the energy field. And the same thing is true of the lactose intolerance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I've presented to you is a very new concept than your, what you're used to hearing. If you're like me, I'm pretty doubtful about some new claims. And I invite you to stay doubtful. I invite you to keep your skepticism. But I'd also invite you to pick a disease that you have and do an experiment to see if you can get rid of it. Just pick one. Don't try to do all of them at a time. Just pick one and see if the concept is more than a concept. Is it a reality or is it a concept? It's called Prometrium, not Provera. That's synthetic. Prometrium is a natural progesterone and you take that at bedtime. Some people need all of these things. So if you are not sleeping, this is the most important slide. I hope you took a picture of it. Uh, I'm going to flip forward and talk about weight loss because we have all of these problems. You have got to take responsibility for your lifestyle. And not only the food you're eating, but the environment you live in, the clothing that you wear, the cleaning products that you use, 
how you even take care of the maintenance of your automobile. All of these things affect you. And it's not only food allergies, although we're focused on that today, there's multitudes of allergies that all of us have to be concerned about. And just a few days ago, it was reviewed by the Royal Society of Canada. Um, and that review is both uh, promising and disturbing. But basically, uh, microwave radiation in Safety Code 6 is based on a heating effect. So if it doesn't heat your body, it's not harmful. That's what Health Canada believes. So the only kind of damage we can get is from a heating effect. And we know that microwaves cause heating because we have microwave ovens and we use that to heat our food. Our guidelines in Canada are a hundred times less protective than guidelines in other countries. And that includes Russia, China, Italy, Switzerland. So we don't have nearly as protective guidelines in other countries. And I don't think the reason for that is that we are actually stronger than other nations. I think it's because we have poor guidelines. And this particular exposure guideline was based on military personnel because our first use of microwaves was for radar during World War II. And so we had to protect military personnel because they were the only ones exposed. We now use microwaves to heat our food. We use it to talk to people. We use it to get on the internet. This is all the equivalent of radar. 30 years. You see the destruction out there. You see the, the growing, and that is where the, where the whole um, comment about the genetic destruction comes in that you actually see concentration camps out there with, with where nobody can enter, where you have the chickens and turkeys and and pigs, which are completely raised out of the, out of a natural environment and taken over by technology. That's where we are, and you can be very depressed about this situation. Um, what are we going to do? And uh, that is where Rachel Perrin comes in. She is a 14-year-old lady, which got raised on, and I have to say that, got, got raised on our raw milk. That's how I got to know her as a little baby. Um, and she woke up, she woke up and has achieved things many people could not achieve. And that is what I want to move into now that she starts telling about herself and the work she's doing. Thank you so much, Michael. That means a lot. Um, and I just wanted to start off by saying my name is Rachel Parent. Um, I'm 14 years old and recently I've been creating awareness about GMOs for probably about three years now. And it's been an amazing journey. And through this, I've realized that our, gener our generation is currently going through so many issues. And you really have to pick an issue that you're passionate about. My issue was GMOs, because I found out so much about how it was impacting our environment and our health. And I realized that someone had to do something about it. Something had to be done. Um, so GMOs for the environment are really bad, actually, because what's happening is it's led to a huge increase in pesticides and herbicides by bees. And 70% of the bees worldwide have already died off. Actually, there's a march on May 24th, and I'd love to see all of you out there. Um, it's going to be incredible. We're expecting 3,000 to 4,000, hopefully more. Um, and what it will be is a march to protect nature, bees, butterflies, and of course to create awareness about GMOs. Video call, which was, which was viewed by over two and a half million people. An exchange she had on GMOs uh, with the O'Leary Show. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we can talk about that. Okay, okay. Um, it's called 14 year old girl picks fight with TV host bully. We didn't name it, I'm just letting you know. Um, <laughs> anyways, so that's what it's called, um, and it's the debate with Kevin O'Leary on the Lang and O'Leary show. <laughs> Please. Um, I also challenged the Minister of Health here in Canada uh, to have a discussion with me, and it's been about maybe three, four months now, and she hasn't responded. 
So um, right now we're putting tons of pressure on her. We've sent out two letters and we've gotten no response. So um, right now we're really hoping that people will call her office and ask her to have a discussion with me. And once it gets a little bit easier, um, schoolwork wise, I'm going to go out to her office and sit outside until she lets me in. There you go. <laughs> now this mystery of that a part of us knows the things that we're supposed to do in this incarnation, knows the greater part of ourselves that we've partially forgotten, because we don't always get a fully empowered upbringing to make us understand the unlimited power and potential we really have, in many cases as we grow up, it can be very constricting. And so there's a part of us that always has within our will forces a slumbering remembrance. In the beginning was the memory. Who 